Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on the Wreath Network on TryHackMe. Today we're going to be taking a look at Task 9, Pivoting Enumeration. As always, enumeration is the key to success. Information is power. The more we know about our target, the more options we have available to us. As such, our first step when attempting to pivot through a network is to get an idea of what's around us. There are five possible ways to enumerate a network through a compromised host. Using material on the machine, so for example the host file or the ARP cache, uh, just as a basic example. Using pre-installed tools, using statically compiled tools, using living off the land, LOTL techniques, and using local tools through a proxy. These are written in the order of preference. Using local tools through a proxy is incredibly slow, so should be uh, this should only be used as a last resort. Ideally, we want to take advantage of pre-installed tools on the system. So Linux systems sometimes will have MF installed by default, for example, uh, which makes our life pretty easy if we can just, well, use NMAP on that system. Albeit uh, any sort of internal detection system hopefully is going to pick up on, hey, uh, one of our hosts is scanning another one of our hosts. Uh, should that be doing that? Is one of our guys doing that? Uh, that should set off some uh, red flags, hopefully. Failing that, it's very easy to transfer a static binary or put together a simple ping sweep tool in bash, which we'll cover below. Before anything else though, it's sensible to check it to see if there are any pieces of useful information stored on the target. Uh, we can use ARP-A, uh, it can be used on Windows or Linux to check the ARP cache of the machine. Uh, here, let me make sure that my connection is still active. Let's see, PWD, there we go. I've left that up or left this open while recording the other videos. So i uh, glad to see it's still active and hasn't died on me yet. Uh, this will show you any IP addresses of hosts that the machine has interacted with recently. So we can do ARP A. Uh, it looks like we have just an Amazon host, so nothing too exciting that we care about at this instance. Equally, static mappings may be found in the Etsy host on Linux or C Windows System 32 drivers Etsy hosts on Windows. Uh, Etsy resolve.com on Linux may also identify any local DNS servers, which may be misconfigured to allow something like a DNS zone transfer attack, which is out, uh, outside the scope of this content, uh, but worth looking into. This is something you should know going forward at least. Uh, on Windows, the easiest way to check the DNS servers for an interface is with the IP config forward slash all command. That will show you all information about your networking. Linux has an equivalent command as an alternative to reading the ets or the uh, resolve.com file, which is nmcli dev show. And that's not actually something that I even know about. So that's kind of neat. If there are no useful tools already installed on the system and the rudimentary scripts are not working, then it is possible to get static copies of many tools. There are versions of the tool that have been compiled in such a way that they do not require dependencies from the box. In other words, they could theoretically work on any target, assuming the correct operating system and architecture. For example, statically compiled copies of Nmap for different operating systems, along with various other tools, can be found in various places on the internet. A good, if dated, resource uh, for these can be found here, so we can take a look at that real quick. This is just a list of static binaries. This is a nice GitHub repo, and I definitely recommend just starting this. Uh, while these are pretty dated, you can see that from the commit uh, history here. This is still something that it'll get you started. A more up-to-date, at the time of writing, version of MMAP for Linux specifically can be found here. And I'll open that up in a new tab. Oh, it's just the direct download link, so I'll grab that later. Be aware that many repositories of static tools are very outdated. Tools from these repositories will likely still do the job. However, you may find that they require different syntax or don't work quite in quite the way that you've come to expect. A lot of times tool syntax gets standardized or adjusted as they are updated. Um, older versions of MMAP will have different issues and can actually introduce issues into a system. Uh, just something to be aware of. Finally, the dreaded scanning through a proxy. This should be done as an absolute last resort as scanning through something like uh, proxy chains is very slow and often limited. You cannot scan UDP ports through a TCP proxy, for example. The one exception to this rule is when using the Nmap scripting engine, NSE, 
as the scripts library does not come with the statically compiled uh, version of the tool. As such, you can use a static copy of Nmap to sweep the network and find hosts with open ports, then use your local copy of Nmap through a proxy specifically against the found ports. That's a lot faster because you already know it's open with your static copy, and then you can limit your scan to those found ports. Before putting this all into practice, let's talk about living off the LAN techniques. Ideally, a tool like Nmap will already be installed on the target. However, this is not always the case. Indeed, you'll find that Nmap is not installed on the currently compromised server of, of the Wreath network. If this happens, it's worth looking into whether you can use an installed shell to perform a sweep of the network. For example, the following bash one-liner would perform a full ping sweep of the uh, 192.168.1.x network. So this last digit is the only one that changes. This is a common home network range to have. So this is a nice one-liner that we can do in bash in this specific case. So if we find that maybe we're on a 192.168.1.0/24 network, we can just ping everything this way and see what, what responds. This could be easily modified to search other network ranges, including the wreath network. The above command generates a full list of numbers from 1 to 255 and loops through it. For each number, it sends one ICMP ping packet to the 192.168.1.x as a backgrounded job, meaning that each ping runs in parallel for speed, where I is the current number. So we're just running a bunch of pings. That's all we're doing there. Each response is searched for uh, bytes from to see if the ping was successful. Only successful responses are shown. So in that way, we can just do a simple ping scan. The equivalent of this command in PowerShell is unbearably slow, so it's better to find an alternative option where possible. That is very blunt and also very true. <laughs> Uh, it's relatively straightforward to write a simple network scanner in a language like uh, C Sharp, which can be compiled and used on the target. This, however, is out with the scope of the wreath network, although a very simple beta can be found here. So it looks like uh, that's a beta version on re uh, Mirrorlands um, GitHub. You can definitely check that out, and it's definitely worth taking a look at, especially if this is something that you want to go into seriously. Um, I definitely, between this task and the next one, would recommend taking a look at that. It's worth noting as well that you may encounter hosts which have firewalls blocking ICMP pings. Windows boxes frequently do this, for example. Uh, if you've ever done retro, it does that. Um, that is intentional. It's meant to show that just because you can't ping it doesn't mean it's not alive. This is likely to be less of a problem when pivoting. However, as these firewalls, by default, often only apply to external traffic, meaning that anything sent through a compromised host on the network should be safe. It's, uh, so they, it should all be safe. It's worth keeping in mind, though. If you suspect that a host is active but blocking ICMP ping requests, you could also check some common ports using a tool like Netcat. Port scanning in Bash can be done, ideally, entirely natively. So you can see that we have, again, another one-liner here that we can just adjust what kind of scan that we're doing or for what network we're doing it. Bear in mind that this will take a very long time, however, there are many other ways to perform enumeration using only the tools available on the system, so please experiment further and see what you can come up with. Let's see what questions we have here. What is the absolute path to the file containing DNS entries on Linux? That is going to be etsy-resolve.conf. Uh, what is the absolute path to the host file on Windows? That is going to be C Windows. System32, drivers, Etsy, hosts, and no, I don't remember that full path. I have notes up on the other monitor. Uh, <laughs> I remember roughly where this is at, um, but that is a long path. How could you see which IP addresses are active and allow uh, IHCMP echo requests on the 10.10.10.x forward slash 24 network using bash? So we can do this with, let me go ahead and copy my command out. This is just a modified version of this command here where we're just changing this bit. So 10, 10, 10 dot uh, one in that case, um, or we can see that we're just doing this uh, I here. So here, let me go ahead and scroll through this so that you guys can see the entire command. Actually here, make it easier. There you go. Uh, wait, no, 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 no. We don't want that. Hold on. There we go. 
So we can see that we've got the entire command there that we would be able to go through and do that ping sweep. And I'll leave that up on the screen for just a moment, but I'll go ahead and click submit. And that is going to do it for task nine. In the next video, we'll go over task 10. But until then, happy hacking.